Okay, tonight we're out in the garage again. Uh, I do have a bunch of spare parts laying around that we got from warranty. Uh, turn, you know, when we went out and did warranty work, and you know, the parts just lay around the shop, and I'll pick them up and uh, just just to bring them home and take them apart to see how they work. Um, this right here is off a of variable speed uh, furnace. It's a variable speed inducer motor. Um, we do a lot of carrier work, so this would come off a uh, furnace. Uh, it would be, you know, 58 series, like a 58 MVC, 58 UVB. Um, this was this motor's been around, or this housing with this motor configuration has been around for. Oh gosh, probably since 1996 they've used this configuration with this motor. And what they found within the last couple of years is that, um, I don't know if it was a manufacturing issue or what, these have become really, these motors are really pricey to produce so they changed they changed the motor on here and they changed the configuration and and you'll see in a previous video I have that uh, yeah they changed it they put a cover over the motor and uh, they put a new bracket down here for an inducer uh, pressure switches um, what they did is they put a motor just like this this is off a 59 series furnace this came off a 59 um, MN7 or yeah variable speed the new 59 series carrier furnaces which are the 59 series uh, MN7s uh, this did have a module sitting down here but I took it off um, just to see it was actually covered in plastic and under that plastic there was a, a, a silicone coated circuit board the silicone coated circuit board must have been about an inch thick so they encased all the electronics in the silicone but what we're going to do tonight is we're going to kind of tear it apart and uh, just to show you the insides of it um, because you look at the box you see a motor and but I mean how does it actually work so let me let me tear this thing apart. We're going to take the cover off. We'll look at the fan wheel. We'll look at how it operates and the, con the condensate removal on uh, the 90 plus furnaces. So we'll kind of we'll kind of tear it apart. Let me get these screws out right here, and uh, we'll take it apart and look at the fan. All right, I do have the motor off and the fan. And what I was talking about condensate removal are these little channels in here. What it is, like say this, say the exhaust was on, you can flip this any way and it works. Um, say if the exhaust was shooting out the bottom there, right here, and it went outside the cabinet and up. Um, any condensate that was produced in the exhaust would drain down here. So, and if you see, there's a little channel there at the bottom. If you can see that. And what it does is it drains into the housing here, right here. And at this point right here would be this fitting right here, or vice versa here. It depends on which position the furnace is, where you put this cap. It could be here, it could be over there. It's basically the same same thing. And, it, you know, if you flip it over, it's got the same channel at the bottom. Okay, that's just to keep the condensate away from the fan blade. Sometimes, if this gets plugged, You'll, the water will build up here and you'll notice that there's a sloshing noise in the in the motor itself or in the housing itself so 
So now let's kind of take this thing off. And, oh, there's that big fan. Um, so this part right here that bolts up to the, heat, the secondary heat exchanger. So the heat exchanger bolts up right here. And on the heat exchanger, there's a self sealing ring around the heat exchanger. So if you take this off and you replace it with another one, you don't have to use any caulk. You can just put it on there and it'll work just fine. But what I do is I usually, on the heat exchanger itself, the opposite side of this, I'll put a little bead of caulk just to ensure that I have a good seal. So this is what's inside this housing. Um, this is probably the the biggest fan wheel of any 90 plus efficient furnace that I know of that I've dealt with. Uh, for some reason Carrier is always used, Carrier Bryant Payne is always used these big fan wheels. For some reason it's just you know the design of the furnace. So and usually I have never in the field taken this assembly apart and just replaced this wheel. You probably could. There probably is a number on it. I'd have to take oh there's a number. 322-592-701. That's that's carrier part number or Bryant part number. So I mean technically if you got a part number, yeah, you can call Bryant Carrier up and get the wheel, but you know, these are probably far few in between. I've, like I said, I've never replaced just the wheel in here. By the time the wheel's bad, the motor's bad. Uh, you might as well just replace the whole housing. Uh, so let me get that off there really quick. Okay, so we got the wheel off. Here's the wheel. That's, I don't know if you want to call that the front or the back, that's, uh, um, that is the intake side. Turn around, it's just completely flat on the other side. It is, it is, it looks like it's keyed, it's got a flat spot there. Okay, here's the motor shaft, here's inside of the housing. Not much to look at. That's where the motor mount is on the other side. So it's molded in there. Okay. There is. Now let's get this motor off here. I've never taken one of these totally apart like this. So let's kind of. There's where your pin. Your. Uh, connector goes. So let me take this motor off here. I got three screws that should come right off, slide right out. Maybe not. Maybe so. Not sure. Okay, let me get that done. Okay, we got the motor off. It was just the three mounting screws. One here, one here, one here. And these are vibration isolators. Usually I replace these every few years. They get hard. And the motor sags. So, and this thing, this thing's got to weigh every bit of five pounds. It's really amazing how heavy this is. And I don't know what these are back here. I don't know if they're spacers. It's really strange. Um, never really paid it. I knew it was always there, but I never paid attention to what it exactly was. But if you look where the motor goes in this little rubber rubber housing to prevent flue gas but it doesn't seal too well I mean it's if you look at it you can see white it's not a very tight fit hmm. interesting before I take this apart I kind of want to weigh it because uh, that thing is heavy. 
I wonder why the motor mounts go bad all the time. I never realized how heavy this thing was. So, let me get my scale and we'll weigh it really quick. Okay, got my refrigerant scale. Let's see how much it weighs. Maybe eh, it's not five pounds. Maybe it's a good three, but it's heavy. No, it's actually almost six pounds. Six pounds. That's amazing. Six pounds riding on three little rubbers. No wonder why the thing fails all the time. You can see where the rubber shaft was sealing. It's got a nice shiny buff mark there where it went through the housing here. Wow, that's amazing. 6.2 pounds of motor and metal right there on the inducer. No wonder why this motor costs so much money. Alright, I want to start taking this apart. I want to get these metal pieces off the back here. And uh, we'll get the motor cover off. Okay, we got the motor apart. Um, there's uh, three screws on the back of the plates. And believe it or not, these are just like shims or something. I mean, it's really kind of strange. But that's a lot of your weight right there. I still got the scale out, so I mean, just in these shims alone, you get almost two and a half pounds. Really, I don't. I don't even know why they're there, actually. So, then the motor. That's. 3.2 pounds. So I mean that that weighs a ton right there. I mean there is actually these little individual plates. I don't know, maybe they're sixteenth. Um, they weigh 2.5 ounces a piece. Um, I think I counted 11 different plates. Okay, um, this just basically goes on there. It's a plastic cover. It snaps in. One there, one there. But, uh, it's really strange to see all these plates there. Don't know why they're there. I mean, that's a lot of weight. Um,. Maybe it's just to keep the motor. Maybe the motor's got so much torque. No, I mean, basically, I don't know why it would be there. I mean, basically, that's right there. And that motor is bolted to that through the mount. I wonder if it's to counteract the torque of the motor. Don't know, it's really strange. I mean, that's a lot of weight. Almost two and a half pounds of weight. And, uh, you know, this is just a, it's an ECM motor. You know, it's controlled by a circuit board. We can get this off. Can get this off here. Ouch! No, it's just gonna bust off. But um, yeah, if you want to know what is inside these uh, these carrier ECM motors, carrier Bryant Payne. I don't think Payne uses much of these, but carrier and Bryant, we see a lot of these and. You know, these, these are the motors that fail. They make noise. Um, this motor seems good. I don't know what was making noise or why this one was bad. Um, but, you know, on these pins here. Uh, 
assembled in Mexico. Look at that. Just where all our coils come from. No wonder why they fail. Um, you know, with these hookups here, I know there's, I don't know which one's which offhand. I got a, I got a power, uh, you know, I got 110 volts, I got a, a ground, and I got a neutral, and then I have three more wires in here which control the speed of the actual motor itself. And from the looks of it, uh, I would be assuming that this on this side is high voltage power over here and this is your low voltage power here just smaller connections so you probably have a hot and a neutral here and uh your control voltage goes in here and I can't remember the voltage offhand it's not 24 volts it comes off the board as a, a DC current on this off the board and is I don't think it's over 10 volts it gets on these connections right here DC and that comes from the board but yeah, I just want to kind of tear this down. I thought it was kind of interesting with all this weight on there and how heavy the, the motor actually is to tear it down, tear it apart. But, uh, basically, on the new ones, or even, they, they, they don't make this motor anymore. And what they did is they changed it to one of these little cheap AC motors. And what they did is they put a circuit board here and they control it. I don't know if it's DC or AC. This one is 120 volts. 110 watts. So I guess what they do, I don't know, there's motor choke there. I don't know, on these new ones, I don't know exactly how they're controlled on what voltage. I don't know if it's uh, AC voltage or DC voltage. It's probably DC. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we got heating season right around the corner here, actually. We're starting heat, heat season now in Michigan. Um, so, I mean, we're coming on, uh, up on October, and it's... Um, going to be extremely busy, so I'll have more of these teardowns, and I'll have more of these motors and other stuff to tear apart. So that's it for this one. This is just kind of a teardown video. I like tearing apart the stuff to see how it works. So that's it. Like and subscribe, guys. Thanks.